does could I stay in the stomach ache because I want to eat something that tastes good but knowing that in a way you're robbing your body of nutrition um, it's behind among other things Crohn's disease IBS and we're going to look at a whole host of, of problems anybody who has IBS would probably do almost anything to get rid of it so the reaction to the lectins can be quite strong Another thing that's a very common uh, cause of lectins is diabetes. When you look at the diagram, I've shown the cell there, and notice that the lectin is impersonating insulin, and it's seated itself in the insulin receptor on the cell. So this means that glucose flows into the cell unchecked because uh, the lectin has made the cell think that insulin is coming in, and all of that glucose is converted to fat. So we never thought about wheat or those seven items actually being a cause of diabetes among type A's. Because your doctor doesn't tell you that, he knows that. Right. So that's one way you can approach diabetes for any of the blood groups by avoiding lectins. You've got a far smaller chance of developing uh, insulin resistance and diabetes. Another effect of lectins is the lectins tend to block a nerve signal and can lead to cognitive impairment. Um, it's a, a contributor, if not the cause, of Alzheimer's. So again, diet becomes very critical for those folks who have that propensity anyway. Um, arthritis. How many of you have arthritis? Or the starts of arthritis? Yeah. Okay. Um, in, in any blood group, uh, the lectins can contribute to arthritis, but in particular, the nightshade vegetables, the potatoes, tomatoes, and eggplants, um, are very um, very closely correlated with development of lectins and then um, arthritis. And so by stopping those for people who have that tendency, and it's unusual in an A because you don't have all that stomach acid anyway. O is very prone that way because of all the stomach acid. So if you're already developing, is it in your hands? Uh, my knees. Knees. Yeah, if you knock off the tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants in particular, and the other uh, lectin-included uh, foods for the A, you would have a better shot, shot at stopping that development. Claire, do you have deep flecked up here? I do. Oh, you do. So Dr. Diadamo, who's behind all this science, does sell a product that helps remove lectins from the body. Um, I take it just because of propensity to arthritis. Um, but it's interesting, he makes the comment, no, you can't eat the potatoes and then chase it with the deep flag. So <laughs> anybody who's figured that out. So this, so this is one possibility, should you start developing um, arthritis or want to get rid of the lectins from other foods that happen. Um, another common uh, effect of lectins is the development of thyroid issues. Anybody in here with thyroid problems? Okay. So when we talk about the thyroid, the lectins in food directly interact with the thyroid tissue and embed themselves. And because the lectins are a different blood type than your own, a different blood sugar, right, your body will actually mount an autoimmune response against your thyroid to get rid of those lectins. So I promised you a list of <coughs> medical conditions that are affected by lectin consumption. I'll give you just a minute to look at those but you would probably be hard pressed to come up with anything that's not on these four screens. We talked about Crohn's, talked about fatigue, all the gastritis type issues, <coughs> gingivitis, halitosis, IBS, leaky gut syndrome, libido imbalance, I mean, it's all up there. So Dr. Diadamo would have you believe that eating incorrectly for your blood group ultimately leads to almost every medical condition you can think of. And it probably does play a role. Mm -hmm. Because any, anything else you ate that was poisonous mm -hmm. would have an impact on you. We just don't think of diet as <coughs> severe. So Claire, let's bring up my list, and I think y'all hit on just about everything on there. Mm -hmm. Sensitive to the needs of others, mm -hmm. good listeners, very <coughs> clever and detail-oriented, creative and inventive, introverted, and one y'all didn't mention, sensitive to colors and the environment around them, and it usually makes them very fashion conscious. They're usually very good dressers, but not flashy. Mm -hmm. Do y'all think that describes you? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and y'all all got those characteristics exactly. Yes. 
So let's go forward and we're going to look at the less attractive characteristics of the uh, of the <coughs> And I think I misspoke because the A's really don't have any less attractive characteristics when compared to the O's. Mm -hmm. So A personalities usually appear very calm, but they're usually filled with worry and anxiety. So that's one you mentioned. So that's very, very common for an A. Uh, they're very accommodating, and Claire and I were watching y'all as a group, as compared to the group of O's we watched. <laughs> y'all took turns, you discussed very calmly, where the O's are like, smiling all the time. Just watching you to see that, that desire to, sleeping, that is so to accommodate and get along. Yep. Trouble sleeping, that's the anxiety. Oh. Yeah, exactly. You think and too much. You really uh, love the day. Very capable of leadership roles, but they often choose not to because it adds stress to a system that's already stressed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all think that describes you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's talk about why these things are. The, the thing about the A is that they are cortisol driven. Cortisol, stress hormone, and your brain chemistry, everything about your brain chemistry revolves around cortisol. Now we think about cortisol as a hormone you hear about on television a lot these days. For some years now they, they think it's contributed to weight gain, right? That if you had too much cortisol you couldn't lose weight. Turns out that's absolutely true, at least in the A body. So A's naturally produce high basal cortisol. Mm -hmm. They overproduce it when they're stressed. Mm -hmm. And since we know that they're prone to stress, they're overproducing cortisol all the time. Cortisol peaks between six and eight in the morning and they really say A should get up during that time frame because if you don't, you're groggy. Sleepy. Yeah. Is that That's all true. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sustained levels of cortisol impair your immune system and that's why A's are prone to a whole host of things that we're going to look at. Mm -hmm. Claire? Mm -hmm. uh, thyroid function slows down. Uh, as in response to this high cortisol level. Progesterone and testosterone decline, women become estrogen dominant. Abdominal fat increases in response mm -hmm. to cortisol. Now, cortisol we know contributes to insulin resistance, but here's the kind of interesting fact. That extra fat doesn't go away when you restrict calorie consumption if cortisol is elevated. Right. So you've got kind of a catch-22. You've got high cortisol just because of your brain chemistry mm -hmm. and losing weight becomes very difficult when that level is high. So everything we're gonna talk about supplementation-wise for the A revolves around managing that cortisol level to try to get back to a place where the body does function well. Mm -hmm. So more than 20 minutes of sustained exercise in an A raises cortisol. And as a culture, we've been told an hour, right? Exercise three times a week, at least an hour. That may not be so good for an A. They do better on much shorter bursts of exercise.